Hi, I'm Sasha Costanzo and we're at the Hester Place Reserve for the WA Slalom K1 TV Challenge. Today we're going to see competitors from students to veteran champions compete in a canoe race that will see them paddle up and downstream through gates for the best time without incurring penalties. These races are from students to an, even an Olympian. They will all be competing in the same qualifying round to make it to the finals regardless of their age. We're here with our commentators, Robin Sanders and Neil Long. Hi guys. Hello Sasha. Good afternoon Sasha. So what can we expect from the races today? Hopefully it's going to be a clean, fast race with the paddlers demonstrating their technique and skill. It's certainly with the, the broad spectrum we have of competitors today from Olympians right down to juniors, we're going to see um, differences in boat control and it's certainly going to be great to uh, watch the differences in all the paddlers. So where do you think of the most obvious challenges are going to be? I think what happens on these sort of courses, Sasha, where it's flat water, is the paddlers go flat out and they can make mistakes rather than recognising they need to be skillful and technical. Yeah, with two seconds added to their time every time they hit a gate, um, that's certainly something they've got to be mindful of. So what do you reckon is going to be the, like, the gate that we have to watch out for today? Well, I think it's interesting. You could almost say that gate one and two are the ones that are going to make them think twice. And then gate 10 is a very tight little gate, so it'll be fun to see it. And with some uh, certainly great weather today, but uh, great, as I said, the spectrum of paddlers, um, it certainly will give you an idea of how difficult it is to do this sport. Also, what kind of competitors should we be looking out for today? Oh, I think it's hard to go past Ben Pope in the men's. Uh, he's a very talented paddler. And we've got Georgia, who's trying out for the Australian under-23 team in the women's. Yeah, certainly a great cross-section, and uh, from Olympians right down to our juniors. In 2012, Australians were glued to their TV to watch canoe slalom. It was the London Olympics, and Perth's Robin Jeffrey and Kaina and Meili were competing in the men's sea to event. So what is canoe slalom? Well, put simply, the aim is to navigate a kayak through a river, through a course of hanging gates in the fastest time possible. Sounds simple? But getting through the gate is where the sport gets more complex. There are between 18 to 25 hanging gates on a course. Most of these gates are downstream, where the paddler travels through the gate towards the finish line. At least six are upstream, where the paddler travels through the gate away from the finish line. The gates have a number above them, with the incorrect direction having a red line to show which way the paddler must go through. The paddler's whole head and part of his boat must go through the gates. The gates must be done in numerical order in the correct direction without touching the hanging poles. A 50 second penalty is given if the paddler misses a gate, does the gate out of order or crosses the gate line in the wrong direction. A two second penalty is awarded if the poles are touched by any part of the paddler's body, boat or paddle. Only one penalty can be awarded for each gate. About five to six gate judges are placed on the bank to award penalties to any paddlers who touch or miss gates. Start and finish judges record the times and a compiling team enters the penalties into a computer to produce the final results. Alright everybody, welcome to the WA Slalom K1 TV Challenge. Thank you for coming out today. Um, good luck to everyone today in the race. Do your best. Now, today's race is going to be rather different to one of our usual races, so I wanted to go through some of the format changes so that we've got an understanding about it. Um, Today we're going to be having two qualifying runs and then there will be a final. So we don't normally do that, it's a different sort of format. Paddlers are in. Look at the power there, she's pushing through now. Demels are there. And as you can see, even on the slow-mo there, uh, what it takes to uh, get these tight turns, especially on the flat water. There's no assistance from the, the flowing water here because as it is flat, uh, as opposed to uh, some of the bigger events. Yeah, it's just hard work sometimes. But it's interesting, you know, if you get the boat in motion and yes, the eddies and little things like that happen, help, but it's, you get the boat in motion, you do good strokes, you can turn the boat very effectively. Uh, one thing they paddlers do hope is Whoa, look at that, that's just a beautiful move. That's the sort of thing you can do with a new boat, some power and balance. And a great Georgia just showing her technique there on the flat. First boys on the course. Uh, certainly moving along, yes. 
Hines, young lad. One of the Vogels, Mitchell. Now we see Georgia working home. She's using all of that experience that she used internationally and in the training in the last year. She's going to go to Sydney and train at the uni go to university there and train Penrith full time. Coached by Miriam um, Fox, who's a former world champion. Be straight out of the gate. She'll have done the first run and she'll be feeling a lot more confident about the course now. Nice turn through gate one and across to gate two. Nice smooth power now. Something you certainly see where, with the technique of the paddlers today is uh, that they'll be paddling once again in that three-dimensional aspect. If you watch their heads, you'll see that the boat is always moving with the top paddlers. Look at the way she's placing the blade. They're nice and clean. Nina's always looking for that, the shortest run between the two gates. You'll see some of the paddlers going upstream uh, on their upstream gates. Uh, on a flowing course, they would be using the waves and the uh, flowing eddies and the water to help turn their boats. And as we've seen now, just through the finish line, paddlers trying to be as clean as possible for their, their practice here. And they've done a magnificent job with the ladies. And uh, Nina on the course now in a beautiful white and uh, red boat. And as we can see just there, the technique on the pirouette tail turns, uh, dipping the tail under for getting the tighter turns, Robin. Now, as they come up to gates one and two, a lot oh. of the paddlers uh, bolt into the gate, but uh, just remember they've got to get that first tight turn in. And there's Alexandria, just a, just a going, you know, just a great little talent. Um, works hard, focused. And a magnificent run as the ladies there just crossing the line. And a great shot there of uh, all the persons uh, waiting for their turn on the run. So everybody uh, has their two minute uh, gap between their run events and do a magnificent course. It's uh, all on your own. It's Alexandria turning at gate seven now. She's got to work hard across to make sure she turns above eight to make nine go better for her. You can see as she's done that, she's now working across towards nine getting such a, a fantastic cross-section of young people into the sport and it's a great um, there he is Mr. Cullen stepping stone isn't it Robin to yes. uh, even go on to, to whitewater racing and oh. uh, and it's being an Olympic sport exactly and I think it's I think that's exactly it you you do slalom you can do down river you can do marathon and paddlers have gone from slalom to to become marathon paddlers of the highest level and the vice versa, you know, so that that's the beauty of this canoeing, that it brings out all sorts of talent. There's Latan, still working. Isn't it a credit to him? Mid-60s and still working hard. What a credit. <laughs> Every time that I, I get in the boat and I think oh, I'm getting too old for this, I should be at home sitting on my backside and uh, <laughs> resting. And I look at guys like Slatton and Bevan and you think, well, no, <laughs> that's no excuse. I'm only just being lazy. So get out there and uh, keep the fitness up. Whoa, beautiful. Popped it, popped it. Beautiful pivot turn. Yeah. Bevan and Slatton, where is that at? Now, oh, here's we are, Cody, in another gen new generation boat. So we're now starting to see the best of the... We're starting to see two paddlers. Fantastic. The guys are right up with the skill level now. As you can see, uh, this is uh, what makes the sport look easy. Yes. <laughs> is the uh, skill level of these chaps. And a very flat, beautiful job there by um, the Pope. Cody, he's done yeah. a great job. Well, here's Ben. Here's the favourite for today, the fastest. And he's in another sonic boom. Look at the speed of the man. Ups his rate between the gates. Fantastic now, job through gates. We'll see what happens now. Look at it, just keeping the boat rolling, keeping it moving. And, and this turn is very important. Just popped it out. What a beautiful turn, a tight turn. And once again, powering on down to uh, second last gate. This will be an S, Robin? Yes, an S gate, which is an interesting move, but it's, he's obviously determined that's the quickest. You could do it as an upstream, but he's chosen to do it. And look at the power, he's obviously very fit. And this is where you make up that point one of a second that'll get you uh, on the podium. And it could easily be that different today. Could He, he might only win by point one two of a second or lose by that. Good afternoon and welcome to uh, Hester Park. And we're just waiting for the uh, final eliminations of the Salem event this afternoon.
See the paddles just warm out. It's a beautiful uh, afternoon, Robin. And we've certainly got a, a great diversity of uh, paddlers on course now and certainly some, uh, some fantastic international competitors. Yes, Neil, it's a beautiful time now. Um, where we're at is that we've had the qualifying runs and now we're ready down for the finals. These are the finals. This is like a World Cup event overseas. Um, the paddlers, the best paddlers are there ready to go and um, they've had their qualifying runs and they now know it's uh, this is the medal or not. They have been through regular course and they've had course changes. Uh, they actually haven't had a chance to do a practice run on course for the for the qualifier. No, I think that's a, that's what these qualifying these finals are about. You know, they the qualifying they work on and then the finals they change a number of the gates. They're allowed to change up to seven. In this case, they've changed five. So they've got the three and four. They've switched them around. So they've now become an up and a down. And gate 14, instead of being a down, has now become an up. 18 and 19 have switched. And the beauty of that is that the paddler has to think again. He has to think about his course and how he's going to go. So, and uh, here we are, very close to a start now. We're off, and uh, first paddler on course this morning should be Jajorna, Jajorna, Jajorna Rankin. Sophie Burdett, here she comes. Sophie's on course in the green boat. She'll be delighted to have qualified through to the finals. Um, she'll be thinking about the course. It's a little bit new to her. So she'll be sort of fired up. What an honor. First on course, there's a bit of jet noise overhead. One thing that uh, some of the younger paddlers got to come to grips to as they get further on in the career is uh, distractions from the bank, people cheering, etc. So they've certainly got to get their mindset to uh, get what we call a clean run go through those uh, gate poles without touching them and if they do touch them they will get a two second uh, addition to their overall run time so uh, you're looking for what they call a fast clean time and she's done a great job through there being very cautious though and uh, looking for a, a clean run because it is tough to make up those two seconds Robin. Oh very tough on a flat course it's even tougher so she's sort of just moving some of these gates that she'll recognise but she's heading down to a gate that she doesn't recognise, gate 14, so she'll be rejigging her line and uh, as she comes into that she'll be positioning her boat to make sure she goes cleanly and as efficiently as she can. So this is where the experience from uh, some of the older paddlers comes through where they can uh, watch the demo run after the gate courses have uh, all been changed and just uh, redo it off the cuff and do a nice clean run. Exactly, and they sort of know that they've they paddle so um, unconsciously, competently, they just sort of do things um, automatically. So it's more about how they place the boat and drive rather than with some of these younger paddlers are thinking about their technique. Yeah, certainly when you talk to some of the, uh, the greats like Miriam Fox and uh, they almost zone out and the course actually becomes, you know, almost in a separate part of their brain that it's, uh, it's almost habitual uh, in the uh, use of their craft and their paddle. Exactly. So for Sophie, this is a great honour. This is her first finals. So for her, it's a completely new experience. Um, she's learning how to do a course which is adjusted from something she's raced on. She'll be feeling the pressure perhaps a little bit, um, you know, going down the course. And it's a great outcome for her. And as she just uh, continues run on, just coming through to the end now, I can hear the crowd. And uh, great to have support from so many people. Sophie is uh, only 13 years of age, but uh, certainly done a good showing this, uh, this morning and this afternoon, and uh, great to see her in the finals uh, of the event. Next paddler coming up is Alexandra Vogel. Uh, Alex is uh, <laughs> certainly one of the great Vogel kids, as we say, mm. and uh, she's uh, gone away to uh, Penrith over in Sydney and her great claim to fame is she believes that she managed to hand roll her boat in the whitewater course of Penrith. Yeah, and that's something special. And it's a pretty tough course. She's uh, on course now. Nice pirouette turn there. Tight round with that um, bow draw. This lass used to be a, bas a netballer and a soccer player, but then she decided to pick up the sport only 18 months ago. And look at the boat control for a lady only in the sport for 18 months. It's a magnificent uh, sequence there. As we said, they haven't been able to uh, practice this uh, sequence at all. A few gate changes. 
So it may not be as uh, precise as uh, some of their previous runs, but uh, certainly uh, it'll be a show of technique and skill and uh, actual fitness, especially on the flat water. Just going very nicely there. This is her first finals as well, so this is another unique experience. Um, this will be the first time she's been in the finals, and the point is that when she goes overseas in five or ten years, she'll never forget this day, and she'll understand what it's about. Certainly one thing about um, whitewater canoeing, whether it be Salem or downriver, or even some of the bigger whitewater marathon races, um, it's a great spectacle in the white water and it certainly adds a fantastic element uh, to the sport and uh, as I, one friend said to me yeah it's about the only sport you may not get to the finish line when you start <laughs> absolutely and as uh, Andrew Alexandra was right when she went away to Penrith it's uh, certainly a tough course built specifically for the Olympics in 2000 and as she was uh, managed to paddle on that course uh, sets her up pretty well to do almost any other course beautifully done here. Yep. Sorry, Neil, that was just 16, was a one, one stroke upstream, just beautiful. That's certainly one of the um, changes I've seen in the sport over the uh, 30 years I've seen it, that the technique for actually going through gates, it's tighter, it's quicker, the strokes are, you know, as you said before, you're looking at one stroke to do an upstream there, and it's all about boat control and, and boat manoeuvrability. Here she goes, working her way through. She'll be feeling every bit of that trip. And yep, hoping uh, she's uh, got a clean run. So they're sitting in that start pool between the line of trees and they're held by the tail. And here comes Nina Mueller. Cheered on from the scene, sidelines. Good first two gates, Rob. Yes, very nice. She's thinking of upping her training now and lifting her level. She likes the sport and she's, um, you know, just very nice control there. Good uh, gate work, keeping nice and clean, even through some of the narrower gates. Uh, not too bad for a girl that's just started Pally in 2007. Yes, unreal. I think the thing that people understand is the qualifying, you get a, a course ingrained in your head and you have to memorise it in, absolutely intimately and then the people in the finals go and change it on you. So you've got to rejig that memory. For us old fellas, you, it's a bit of a challenge. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why I gave up slowly. My, <laughs> my memory wasn't good enough to remember all the course. <laughs> Back in the old days when they had 30-odd um, gates. <laughs> but it's great to see uh, so many young people getting through and uh, Nina's certainly uh, not an exception to that. She's had a great time uh, over east uh, at, in Tasmania and also paddling at, at Penrith and in the National uh, Olympic course there at Penrith. So she's uh, quite confident here even on the flat water run. Dipping nice and... Got a lovely boat. Oh, great. Oh, beautiful turn. You see that, as I said before, the three-dimensional paddling that canoe sailing is nowadays. You see it cutting the tail of that boat almost, you know, half a metre underwater. Classic sweep-up stroke, and she looks like she's going to do another one. Just a great piece of work. Looking for a nice, clean run. Certainly hard to make up that two seconds for a gate hit, and uh, almost impossible on a flat water course like this to make up the 50 seconds that you uh, get if you do an incorrect uh, gate manoeuvre. She's um, very well presented. A boat looks beautiful on the water today. Concentration there as she comes up to the last few sequences. She'll be feeling it now. And crossing the line now. Well done to her. Yes. Nina's had a, a great run through there. Mm. Hopefully the judges and gate judges will agree with us. Here comes Alexandria. Alexandria's cutting into gate one, out from the start blocks. Her first final. She's right into it. She's started off nice and clean, and that's usually the trick. Try and build your race, get those first couple of gates nice and clean, and get into the routine of the course. Build yourself into the race, believe it or not. From a, a distance paddler and a downriver paddler's point of view, I can say that you know congratulations to all the coaching, because she's reaching out with long, powerful strokes. She's not dabbing at the water. She's making every stroke count, and certainly you want to cut down that number of strokes on course so you don't hit any gates. But her strokes are powerful, purposeful strokes, and she certainly got the power to back up that uh, that technique. She's quicker than some of the 50-year-old um, and above men. She's, um, you know, I don't know if that's good or bad, but <laughs> the 50-year-old men are meant to be stronger than that. But this lass is real quick. 
Well, I can tell you, Rob, um, going away to Europe and getting your backside whipped, <laughs> if I might say, by some ladies in Europe um, while you're paddling, yep, they can certainly uh, um, take you down a notch or two when you... Um, I think my great challenge when I was doing downriver was to actually win the ladies. <laughs> because I think I ranked 15th once in the ladies. So, yeah, they are brilliant paddlers. And uh, it's certainly uh, in this area, they give the men a, a run for their money and embarrass a few of the older chaps like ourselves. Mm -hmm. Alexandria will be very happy with this run. There's a couple of touches here and there, but this is her first finals, and I think it's a really important thing for her to go through to understand the change in the course, the change in mental aptitude needed, um, how to approach those gates slightly differently, how to deal with tired muscles, um, how to deal with expectation, um, you know, those sort of things, how to deal with sort of her own beliefs, her own views, and uh, perhaps, you know, maybe she's just plain tired or she's feeling great, but the course catches her out. It's all part of the finals game. It's and what a great finish. Well, Demelza's is next up, Demelza a wall. She's the eldest of the three paddling walls. Uh, we've seen them, um, two of them today. Here she goes. She's training Saturday mornings, uh, Tuesdays. She's training with last hunt. She's probably on the water four or five times a week now. Um, very determined to get to the next level. Wants to go overseas. Um, Once again, she'll be, uh, she's competing in Canada, New Zealand, and in the UK. So she's, uh, with only five years into her sport, she's a... Uh, paddled throughout uh, Europe and some of the most fantastic courses in New Zealand. Uh, I remember in the early days that we'd send junior teams over to New Zealand and they'd be lucky if they came back with any of their boats. <laughs> so um, yeah, they used to get pulled up at customs and wondering why, you know, what's happened to their boats. And we had a few young ladies in tears trying to explain to customs that they didn't sell them. They were at the bottom of the river somewhere. <laughs> but. Uh, Demels has done some great turns there, great performance on course. She's going very smoothly, I don't think she's touched. Um, nice, smooth, powerful strokes. You can certainly spot her with a, a long blonde hair, mm. and it's uh, great to see her. She's uh, studying at uh, Curtin College, specialising in drama, so <laughs> hopefully no dramatics on course for her today. No, by nature she's a very calm lass. <laughs> there, that's it, what a lovely stroke. Look at that great pivot and that big 360 around that gate. Her coach, last time, was very pleased with it. They're she, listening to it. There's a reverse up. She did it because she's coming down on the gate just a little bit tight, so she needs to do a reverse up to make it work. Brilliant technique on it. She's just stretching out. Only about the four or five strokes in between uh, gates, but she's oh, certainly... It's a sweep up. What a nice stroke. She's certainly uh, stretching out to... Uh, get maximum speed in between the gate lines. She'll be feeling it now. Power, power, power. What do you think of that stroke, Neil? Very good, she's got her head up, she's reaching forward. Very hard to get a lot of body twist in the little slalom boats because they are packed in there tight to, um, <coughs> so you've got complete control of the boat with your hips and your, and your torso. But you know, she stretched out. Look oh, at that. Beautiful replay there. Takes that gate. Yeah, just heaps of power in the rotation. Yeah. That's an Olympic competitor in the making there, Robin. I, I hope so for her sake, and I agree with you. That's just a, and that basically is called a one-stroke upstream. So you've got three types of ups. You've got a, the single stroke up, you've got a sweep up, and you've got a reverse up. And then the old ones where the pocket, which is what Neil and I used to do, but they're sort of gone on now. The, these new boats allow you to spin behind the gates. Yep, the great three-dimensional paddling that you get out of this craft now. There's a little bit of volume, as you said before, just be in front of the cockpit, which allows them to uh, be used in a fairly heavy white water, but with a very slow cut tail, the tail cuts in, and you get those great pivot turns, which we're seeing uh, now by the paddlers. Now, these are the two. We're heading down into the top two women, Isabella and Georgina. Isabella, this is her first, I think it's her first finals, and she'll be really going for it. Um, she was pushing hard, and this girl is a very strong girl. She's got a new boat now. It's got uh, green, white, and purple. She's done her fingernails in purple to be in the appropriate day. For it's got to be fashion. You've got to match. She's wearing a purple vest. This is, you know, this is what it's about now: fashion with speed. The girls like to look good and, and good on them too. It certainly uh, brought up the uh, sport and made it a greater spectacle. 
and uh, this is what we're all about today. Isabella, great shoot coming of course, uh, she's a year nine at uh, Churchlands, only 14 years of age um, from the Choke family and it's great to see her, she's uh, became the women's C2 champion with, with uh, Demelza at the Australian Championships. A national C2, isn't that amazing? Uh, it's great to see, you know, we don't have a lot of facilities over in, here in Western Australia to uh, you know, get paddlers to get the experience, but for you know, girls to do such a fantastic job, Lady C2 at, a, at the Nationals, and at that age as well, Robin, that's fantastic. I agree, completely agree. And you just, you've just you just seen a demonstration of a almost a sweep up or a one stroke, and here comes another one, powerful, comes into the, the upstream, times a run, you know, just very nice. You can see she's a bit tired now, a little bit of lunging there, but the strokes are still going in okay. More power. Just Ooh. whooped it round. She's going. You can see she's feeling it now, but she's worked really well. Yeah, that first amount of sprint comes out of you in the first 30 seconds, and then it's just pure grind, grinding with the mind and power on. But she's got to keep that nice straight run through the last gate 20 That's and powering bad. to finish. That's the difference there. She will now be heaving, looking for oxygen. <laughs> This lady trains five times a week at the moment. She trains with Zlatan and uh, myself. She's a good lass. She's got some dedication about her. And that's the sort of thing you need to get to the top in a number of years. It's not a not a one-year game. Beautiful replay there. And here we go again. Oh, look at that. That's poetry in motion when it comes to canoe slalom. Now we're all sitting bated breath. This is Georgia Rankin, and she really is a good paddler. And it's just be a pleasure to see her come down the course. She's going for the Australian under-23s uh, canoe slalom team. She's uh, had some great experiences from around uh, the world already. And it's certainly great to see that uh, nowadays travel not so expensive. Yes. We can get around them. And luckily Australia's still got some money in their pockets. Yes. That uh, our paddlers can go abroad and uh, check out some of the best competition in the world. And the coffee. <laughs> Good coffee. Good coffee is what we all need. And she's wearing a GoPro. <laughs> so we'll be able to get, to get footage of uh, the run from the paddler's point of view. First two gates. Very straight arm in the um, forward stroke. And yes. she, she does them. That gives her a power from the, from the abs and from the admin. Yeah, she's a very strong lady, this one. And she's going to do biomechanical, biomechanical engineering at Sydney University. So in addition to being pretty fast, she's also intelligent. So that's quite a mix. GoPro on the front of the boat as well. <laughs> oh gosh, she's all camered up. <laughs> and uh, she's doing some fantastic news. Let's check this one, Rob. Yeah, it's and coming soon. Comes into that sequence. Cameras around the back of the trees, nicely wooded area, fair bit of shade down here at Esther Park. Yeah, which you probably need, I think it's pushing 37 degrees out there. Wait for some of that beautiful undercuts that she'll get through with the tail on that gate. Going through the uh, You can the see stagger. her just checking the gates because of the sort of the memories. Here we go, yes! That's beautiful that tail fantastic. cut pivot. <laughs> That's the reverse sweep that we've all been wanting for. Wait for the men. <laughs> oh, there she goes. Gee, that's so much power needed to do that. It's hard to explain. But it's um, such boat balance, power, weight. I think if you look at surf, you know, if you look at surfing nowadays, when you see some of the radical 360 manoeuvres you get with um, pro surfers. And this sort of equates to what we've got with canoe slalom nowadays. They've advanced uh, similarly to the boat handling that we've seen here today. Look at that boat go. All the water. Powering, great wash there. Good time. She should be happy with that and hopefully uh, coming on a clean score. Yes. And she can see she's working hard. But the, look at that boat balance. Just beautiful control. Reaching back and reach through the gate and bow draw. And here's the reverse sweep that everybody dreams of doing. Oh, that is, that is certainly poetry for canoe slalom. And uh, when you can do that, you know you've, uh, you're on your way to Olympic medals. Well, here we go. We're not far away from the men. That was very, very exciting to see the ladies. They got better and better. Um, we've got one of our best paddlers over here, Jeannie Collins, who's injured at the moment. And I'm sure she is missing that she isn't in the finals. But she's going to be back and she's going to have fun with them as well. So now we're getting ready for the men, and um, you know the men—they just 
They hammer that course. Got a bit more strength, so they tend to do some of those um, reverse sweep moves a little bit more often because of it's a bit more strength move. You guys are warming up there. A few legends uh, in view in the green boat there. Yes. The godfather of canoeing, Bevan yes. Dashwood, just uh, having a bit of warm up bout rudders. Oh, here we go. Jeremy Cullen. Jeremy Cullen on course, gate one. That was nicely done. Pulling through gate two. Trains at Ascot. Good young lad from Ascot Kayak Club over there in uh, Redcliffe, my own club. And it's great to see so much support that the, uh, the club gives the Salem team and especially the juniors because they are the future uh, of paddlers of, uh, of the whole club system. Yes, they are. And that's how the sport keeps going. It just keeps um, growing by itself and kids keep coming through and the parents, the wonderful parents and the support they give. And he's uh, had the ability to paddle on some fantastic courses, the Mersey in Tasmania, uh, the flowing river of the Ilden, just north of Melbourne, so he's uh, travelled throughout uh, Australia. And that was uh, one of the great things I found with the sport is it gave me a fantastic excuse to get away and, and see so many aspects of Western Australia and in the whole other states as well. Get away from school, Neil, or just oh, like, yeah. oh, by then <laughs> I was I was working, Robin, and uh, <laughs> basically, as a friend of mine said, you um you went to work to fund your habit, and that was canoeing. Yes. What a habit yeah, you have. Yeah, it's a, not a bad little addiction, as we can see. Uh, my mum was happy to see us go off and go paddling with groups of uh, like-minded people and see some of the look at that performance Very and ability. Done by Jeremy. He's paddling very well. He's showing good control. He's not going over. This would be possibly his first final format as well. It's keeping the boat clean. That was beautifully done then. It's Once keeping the boat moving all the time, which is... He's not stalling. And uh, as we said before, you're looking at probably 20, 20 to 30 sprint starts when you do slalom and as he's just powering on to the finish line jeremy's done a great run uh, hopefully in his mind he knows that it's clean and uh, hopefully the gate judges will believe the same Ooh. that was a good reverse oh, up very nice. nice yes very nice reverse up pirouette a little bit more momentum which is what it's all about it's a paddler who won the uh, 2012 Olympic gold called Daniel Mementi, and he uh, has a thing on YouTube called um, Momentum. It's upstream momentum. And back straight into gate one again. Jamie. Jamie's uh, Jamie Rankin on course. It's a great effort to get through to the finals. This, I'd say, is almost certain his first finals, and it's a tremendous effort to get through to this. Looking for a precise run. We've only given them one run, so they've only got to one chance today. Nice. In the finals. No second chances or second runs to choose their uh, best run from. And his wife's uh, judging today. She's judging now on the gates that he's going right through now. So she'll be having an eagle eye on him. Unless he paid a 50 bucks or something, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's one thing. With, you know, when I used to gate judge, you, you had to put any friendships or prejudices <laughs> aside and, and just see it and believe it and that was it and, and call it straight so that's what it's about isn't it you know it's an honor system it's about that it's fun jamie's concentrating there he's going right past his wife at the moment he knows he has to concentrate he didn't even give her a smile though oh yes he's certainly in the zone as we say he is oh. Nice. Well, Nicely nice done. Tight, really yes. nice. Good technique. Nothing wrong with it at all. The only. He's doing the powering now, as you can see. We've set about 100 second course. So you sprint. What uh, a lovely move. He's really mastered these upstreams. The big change in Jamie's paddling is he's been upstreams. That knock then is really just playing tired now. Yep. That'll add two seconds to his time. Yeah. Back in the old days, they used to give us. Uh, 15 seconds a pole. Oh my golly. So you could score about 30 seconds on, on a gate sequence if you messed around. So um, they've certainly cleaned it up by that. Jamie now powering hard. Yeah, you have to be careful through so you hit the gate because he's just playing tired now. Yep. You can and see it in his face. But that's a great effort, Jamie. His, his upstreams have improved remarkably. And, um, you know, if he keeps at it next year, he's going to be a force to be reckoned in the veterans and the masters. 
Certainly great to see uh, the mature guys uh, still involved in the sport and they're certainly giving a lot back as we see some of the guys further on in the field um, looking at <laughs> over the ages of 60 even. Yes. And it's great to uh, have them coaching and, and looking after us. Exactly. Well, Louis coming forward now. Louis an under 14 and here he is, he's just had a seniors, uh, what 50 odd, I don't know Jamie's actual age, but say 50 odd for the purpose of the conversation. And there we've got Louis under 14. Isn't that great? What a spread. It's certainly something you don't see with uh, some of the contact sports around the around the traps. Is that uh, you know you get past the age of 30 and you, you're pretty much beaten up and burnt out. But when it comes to paddlers, if you can stay in your boat in the rough, uh, stay uninjured, and Louis off on course now, uh, you'll be able to uh, continue paddling till your late 70s. Yeah, Louis, um, the potential with Louis, got a, a very knowledgeable father in the sport. The, the intention is Louis planning to go to um, Europe in 2015, uh, where he'll just lift. And his technique, you can already see, there's the basis of really good technique. Nice and tight on the gates, as you say, great technique. Bit of 3D paddling there as well, as he's dipping under the, the uh, minimum of 200 millimeter coverage under the poles. Straining hard on the uh, forward sweep strokes to get his boat back online. Big wide bow rudder. Nice. Just ripped the boat around. Planted the blade and just ripped the boat around. And that's what it's about. Powering up now. He's uh, still starting to feel a bit of the strain, the young bloke. Yeah, you can see it. And uh, certainly coming in for the next sequence now. His father's walking down the bank, watching him paddle. Nowadays we can all get footage of it and uh, take it home and watch. Everybody has a camera nowadays. Yeah, good, we duck. Saw good duck to get under the gate line there. Whoa, wasn't that nice? Nice pivot. Wow. Just so much strength in this little fella. You know, you, you look at doing it yourself and you struggle to do it in your boat and you look at this little fella, well, look what he's doing with the boat. I oh, know that's brilliant, Robert. They're also about a third our weight. <laughs> But I've seen him paddling up at well younger at, um, you know, three o'clock, four o'clock on an afternoon in the week and it's raining and the river's in half flood and he's by himself training. So that's the sort of dedication you need to get to the top. And um, quite confident, quite happy. No yep. sharks up on the well younger I'm aware of. Yeah, he's uh, certainly a great training ground for the young blokes. So you've got a bit of a rapid and some pull for him to, uh, to paddle around in relative safety and certainly get their technique, techniques right, which he's done today. Yes, he has. Powering the finish, he should be happy with that run. He should be. And uh, will that be his first finals? And how, you know, how about that? He's under 14, and you know. So we've just had a um, Nicholas Rankin. Maybe he's been disqualified. If I saw him running past the commentating tent, so he might have been late for his start. Mm. So that's a big, big, big no-no in the finals. That's uh, this is serious stuff. As I've heard over the PA once or twice at events, when your number's up, your number's up. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that in relation to a lot of things. Yes. <laughs> no, certainly, uh, if you miss your start, you, you certainly miss your start. Yeah. And there's no excuse that it's 37 degrees and everything else. You need to be on that cool water instead of us in this tent. No, that's right. The uh, paddler's now warming up. A little bit of wind affecting the, the gate line. That's another thing that uh, Pella's got to watch out for is sure. actual the, the wind blowing the gates. There's no uh, there's no uh, referee that will even let you get away with that one. On course now, Bevan Dashwood, the godfather of canoeing in Western Australia, started up the first uh, clubs in Western Australia and paddled uh, over east as one of the first representatives of the WA teams. He won the Australian titles back in the 60s, early 60s, from a self-taught slalom paddler. Give me a break. Amazing. Well, in a boat that he would have built himself probably out of timber at the time. <laughs> and then, yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Because he is a carpenter yes. by trade. And Bevan would have built that boat himself. And, and later on, like most of us uh, in in the 80s and 90s built our own uh, fiberglass craft but yes. uh, I've seen pictures of him paddling white water dress pretty much the same years now without a helmet <laughs> and uh, he's uh, magnificent for the sport always uh, represents uh, the sport as a, a fantastic um, ambassador and uh, if it wasn't for chaps like Bevan myself and, and even yourself you know we wouldn't be uh, into it as much as we no. are no no it's a big hit but you know it's 
We've got to stop looking back at the old Supremes <laughs> and the Prions and the wooden canvas kayaks because we're in the new generation with these boats that turn on a penny and all of that sort of stuff. And it's, you know, it's it's the new age. And as you were saying earlier, you know, the, you can buy a new boat for three or four grand and, you know, that will take you to the top level. Whereas if you're in cycling, you spend 20 grand. So this sport isn't even an expensive sport. No, in the great scheme of things, and you, you've got gentlemen like Bevan who have... Um, showing that you can you know even with his experience still keep up with the latest gear and the latest techniques of the sport and uh, perform very nicely in the in the veterans and the masters and uh, that skill that uh, he has and he's acquired over the years he's bringing on down to the to the younger paddlers and he's kept uh, slaying and canoeing alive in western australia even without uh, so you know the loss of our harvey course and congratulations to bevan yes. and i uh, certainly salute him for all his input into wa Absolutely. and i tell you what he's a force to be reckoned with on the water as well yes and uh, certainly there's many times that i've watched the chap you know his age many years older than a few years older than myself go past me in races and uh, some of the senior paddlers there just uh, getting a bit of a warm-up on the start pool and on course now robin gate number one we have well he's a very lucky lad the judges have obviously given him a bit of largesse a little bit of space unless he gave it to that gate nick rankin being polite with him today, letting him start just out of sequence. Very, very lucky lad. Nick started paddling after he broke his finger playing football. Aren't we the better fit for it? And we certainly are. He's got the speed on the water now and certainly showing his top skill that he's picked up just recently since 2011. Only three years in the sport and that certainly shows that what hard dedication and, and will give you that improvement. Yeah, he is. And he's actually C oneing as well. He's putting, I think, C one is his preferred discipline, which is canoe one. It's a one one paddle, and um, I think he's uh, going to try very hard to get into the Australian team. He's got the build for it, um, being well coached. He's putting the effort in. Uh, he's nearing the end of that sort of year twelve sort of demands of school, which will allow him to put more effort in. Um, so you know, we can see see some fair potential with him. So we could uh, possibly follow in the great steps of. Uh Georgia. Georgia and, and also Robin Bell. Yes. Fantastic Australian exactly. C1 uh, Olympian. Well, we've just got to get him a clock, though. That's, I think, the thing we've got to get him. <laughs> get just him get him a clock. Start line on time. Get him a clock and see if he can you know, learn to read the time. Other than that, he should go a long way. Magnificent tight turn there, as you say, with the, the single stroke upstreams the paddlers are doing now. And he's uh, in the Badger boat, yeah. built and uh, designed in Europe. Very good boat. They're the, the checkers of Arkin boats. I think I'll probably get into trouble for that, but I think they're just the beautifully made European boats. They dominate the world scene. They're pieces of art inside. They're just finished beautifully. Okay. He's looking tired now, mate. Yeah. <laughs> that initial sprint, that first minute's down. Yeah, well, it's a run up the side of the river. <laughs> the, the start line. <laughs> and he's just crossing the line now. So well done to Nick. That's excellent. He's been allowed to get on the course. Excellent. Beautiful, deep undercut there, as you say. As that three-dimensional paddling certainly uh, comes into its own, gets the boat on the tail. Nice, tight turning pirouette. They've got to be able to turn, haven't they? They've got to have a lot of core body strength. They've got to plant that blade and then just whip the boat around. It's a lot of power in it. It's all on the hips, I've mentioned before. A bit like the surfing slatten. Our other master man of the day. Yes. Previous Olympic and world champion uh, back in Slovakia. And uh, over in Perth, many moons ago, he immigrated and uh, headed up a lot of the coaching here. And you'll, you'll see when he does his turns that he doesn't raise the nose as much as some of the younger guys. He's a great believer in keeping boat control and not doing great big nose things and keeping your weight in the center of the boat and stuff like that. So it's very, and he's just a lot faster. So he keeps the boat a little bit less pirouette than everybody else. You know, he sort of keeps it down a bit. He's a great believer in that. He, not great believer in doing flashy sort of turns. You'll see he's keeping the boat moving all the time. He's in a sonic boom, which is uh, you know the latest generation boat. He tells me it turns like a you know it turns like a top compared to his old boat, which was only just three years old, and yet it's still the same speed in the straight line. So he's getting fantastic uh, speed in between gate lines. Maybe it, dropping a fraction on the the turn speed of the younger paddlers, but 
He's certainly making up for in Look constant flow. Very nice. Well, he's only 65, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> only 65 <laughs> years of age. When I picked him up and brought him to his first club meeting, I, d I didn't realise I was in the, in the presence of a, a great Olympic and world champion. Harold in the first Slalom World Cup ever held. Can you, and got a bronze medal. That's magnificent. And uh, represented the 1965 Yugoslav junior team. The year I was born, he was paddling. So that's fantastic at an international level. Now, when he was going through one of the gates just back then, the wind blew incredibly hard and the gate moved dramatically. And I just hope the judges recognise that burst of wind at that moment and that's when you call burst wind that's it at the finish line sucking in the air once again <laughs> now trying to recover from that fantastic sprint for the finish beautiful boat control Sladen Ibran Imbegovic see just keeps it slight that's just very nice so you're looking at nearly 50 years of canoeing yes. technique experience Yep. and training there and it's great that he passes that on to our junior juniors and all the other team members in Western Australia as one of our leading coaches and it's great to have Slatten here and uh, it's certainly with his guys like himself that keep this uh, sport alive today. Here comes Kieran, as we Alexander, here. Simpson with a GoPro on. First finals he's ever been in so it'll be interesting to see what happens with him. He's in a uh, Warwick Draper designed game. Warwick Draper represented Australia at three Olympics in K1 um, in a row. Um, so this is a very interesting sort of development for the sport. But we've got the Australian design boat beginning to um, take prominence. Yes, usually uh, most of the boats coming out of Europe, not much from America, but um, generally out of Europe, uh, the big uh, French, Italian and German teams are certainly putting a lot of um, money into the development of craft and, and backing their federation teams yes so uh, certainly going over there and competing like uh, these chaps do uh, amongst some of the best in the world uh, certainly increases your, your knowledge and your experience and uh, gives you certain goals to aim for Robin exactly exactly and this kid's studying at TAFE he's um, you know he's got himself a career these kids aren't you know they're all sort of got other things they're doing they're doing year 12 or university or this guy's doing a TAFE course an outdoor um, education he's doing very oh. well and look at that now that's what we want to see it just gives us a taster for what's coming with the next level of paddler but Kieran what a piece of work lovely piece of paddle I've done another one whoa he'll be very happy with that they can go very wrong those sort of moves but he made yes. it work <laughs> yeah you can pop out right at the right <laughs> time and end up you know end up in the trees <laughs> <laughs> and popping up straight underneath the gate and smashing into a two-second penalty. Now, is he going to hold it all together? Because he's feeling tired. You can see it. He needs all of that work out on the river. So they're doing stuff, these kids. They're not just... So they get themselves together and think about their life. Well, we should be pleased with that run. Yep, nice stretching uh, out of, at the finish line. Nice. Boat's a nice colour. Needs to get a matching top so that he looks <laughs> like a Ferrari. Cody and the uh, Pope family. Cody, Ben and uh, Andrew, very well uh, known around the traps. Uh, the boys are not only specialising in the elite sport of canoe sailing, but also having a dabble in downriver racing. Uh, and a very good showing with their fitness and uh, whitewater ability when it comes to downriver racing. Cody, nice turn around gate one, Rob. Oh, very nice. And a lot of power. This guy is a good paddler very good paddler and he's got a lot of power he drives trains during the week for a job so he's uh, doing all of that sort of stuff so it's an important thing for the state and then he's this is his sport you'll be upset with that touch very he's sad. now running he's really running the ragged edge that's what it comes down into the finals the finals about running the ragged edge looking for that fast and clean and staying out of the danger zone yeah. he'll be a bit angry with himself because that was a little bit of a untidy touch beautiful looking boat it's a sonic boom beautifully made lovely colors and powering hard what he'll have is that two second penalty in the back of his mind yes and you'll be thinking gotta make it up gotta make it up gotta make it up never say die as these paddlers do because you don't know what mistakes uh, the other guys are going to make exactly you never, never know. throw in the towel 
look at that. It was a beautiful move there, driving through the gate. Lots of power. And this guy, at that is how you do a reverse a sweep up or a reverse entry. Now, that that is certainly the <laughs> pinnacle. He's taken my breath away. That was fantastic. That's another pearler. Just nice stuff. And I said before, Robin, until you actually try and do something, even with um, a, as an experienced paddler, you know, you don't realise how difficult it is to, to get a boat to move in that and perform like that. That is uh, Formula One control, that. Exactly. I've been paddling for 30 years and I've come back to sport in a few years with these new boats. And to do that is a lot of balance, a lot of weight, weight in the middle of the boat. It's not throwing your weight back, believe it or not. And powering nice. on to the finish line. So Cody, first of the Pope's boys, yes. on course. And here comes Tim Coward. Up, 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 up. Tim Carving 15 pushed years on. old. Timmy's got the GoPro on the head, GoPro on the boat. So uh, he'll be able to sit back and uh, relive that this run. Oh, fantastic. Look at the submerged there on that rock. He actually cleans the bottom of the creeks for us. If there's, any, <laughs> if there's any sharks down there, they're going to have a headache. <laughs> he might be getting the mud off the bottom tail of his boat after that was fantastic. <laughs> Dropping right down to the shoulders, uh, submerged. Woo! Ooh, now, that's, that's so unlucky. That was a great have a go. Great try there. As you say, they're on the ragged edge now, the boys. So yeah. we're, uh, we're certainly trying to milk every last uh, Found hundreds of a second out of the course. Absolutely. This is the finals. I think this will be Tim's first finals, so he will be really going for it. He'll be taking that extra edge, that extra line, and if he gets it, great. If he doesn't, well, you know. He's certainly given it a belt today. I remember Robin Bell once saying that, you know, he was coming second at the Olympics, and he thought, you know, no one remembers second, and he no. went for it, but it just wasn't to be that day. Look at that. Fantastic boat control there Rob. Absolutely beautifully balanced he wasn't leaning too far back he allowed the boat to pop out of the gate and same there he's very nice he'd be slightly disappointed with that it wasn't quite as fast as he would have wanted there this guy does downriver marathon slalom I think he goes to school and studies um, he's a <laughs> 95 odd kilograms he's um very, very fast. Trains Plenty of power in those times. biceps. Oh, look at him, mate. That's muscle. And his boat, it's submerged. Well, here we go. We're all sit with bated breath. Ben Pope. Last paddler on course. Under start, Marshall's holding. Not too baited because we'll get a fly in it. <laughs> and uh, Ben Pope, ranking uh, top three in the Ooh. state wild water championships as you can see there's a speed and power top slalom paddler in the state this might be his i oh know won't be his first finals but it certainly you know he'll find this an interesting experience third place in the c1 in a single uh, canoe single paddle at the australian youth olympics festival exactly. can you believe it and fifth in k1 that's fantastic yeah Second wild water boat in the Abbey Descent this year as well. <laughs> so 133 k's in a downriver boat. That's nice. fantastic. See how he did that, a one stroke upstream. And showing the uh, precision that he's learnt over the years now. Him and the Pope family have a, you certainly enjoy their paddling. And that's a good Very run through nice. the sequence. Nice. He's turning above the gates. He's getting real momentum. This is the trick with these gates. That's just beautiful. He's got momentum all the way through great through the stagger there rob yeah, very nice oh uh, his brother just popped a move on him yeah i think that but i think I, uh, but he is cleaner <laughs> i think he's pretty, he's going faster but his brother's popped the move yeah <laughs> oh that was a nice move one stroke upstream then he's powering now this is this is where the and stamina look at his comes condition. through yeah you can see he's still in good shape that is a beautiful all the technique in the world is no good if you're absolutely exhausted. I don't know how I can get so excited about this, but you know, it's worthwhile. He's done a fantastic run. Very nice. Ben Pope, as I said, top uh, competitor in so many disciplines, and, and this is his favourite men's K1. And very good. 
We just see his replay there. And that's fantastic too. Fantastic, Robin. It's been a beautiful day. It has been a beautiful day. Thank you very much, Neil. And thank uh, you thanks the paddlers. very much to all the paddlers for showing such a wonderful day. Canoe Slalom in Western Australia. Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks for everybody for viewing today and it's been a spectacular day down here at Hester Park and certainly some uh, beautiful canoeing in Canoe Slalom in Western Australia. We'd like to thank uh, Canoeing Down Under, Mr Terry Boland's company, for all the support he gives uh, canoeing and canoe slalom in Western Australia. So thanks very much to Terry Boland. And also thanks to uh, everybody at Central Tafe for uh, a great uh, production today. And, it's and in the winner of the ladies' junior section is... Neil, thank you very much. The winner is Alexandria. With a time, with a time of 1.32.09 and a clean run. Well done. Well done. Clean run, no penalties on podium number one. And she gets a fantastic canoeing down under voucher and her medal. And number two is Sophie Burdett. Well done, Sophie. Sophie coming forward. Thanks very much to Canoeing Down Under for all their support. And, and Sophie's second run was clean, and that's what got her into the space. There we go. Give the ladies a round of applause. Thank you. Great paddling. Silver medal, Tarquin Wall. Tarquin, well done. Tarquin's second run was clean. Congratulations. Nice clean break run. It. <laughs> Second run, target. Well done, sir. And third, Cameron Vogel. Well done. Fantastic effort by the junior well men's. Standing up nicely for photos. And it's a pleasure to see that the future of uh, Canoe Sail in West Australia is in such good hands. Congratulations, gentlemen. A round of applause for the guys. Woo! You just got to like paddle. Have you been in any competitions? Uh, no. <laughs> Do you want to hopefully go into competition? Yeah, I'm going to go into the nationals um, for in July. And so, what we're all waiting for, the finals of the ladies. Coming in third was Demelza Wall. <laughs> With a time of 125.94. Up on position three, well done. Clean. And a clean penalty clean free run. run. And number two, Isabella. Cherry. Well done to Isabella. 120.73 with two second penalty. Oh, one slight touch there. One Congratulations. And number one, soon to leave Western Australia and go back to Sydney, Georgia Rankin. With a time of 113.85, clean. And thanks very much, Canoeing Down Under, for all their prize support, and congratulations to the ladies. And some very spectacular runs today by the gentlemen this afternoon, are certainly showing their skill and ability on the course, and the winners are, Robin. The most spectacular move was Cody Pope. On gate 16. <laughs> and for the winning of the race, number three, Timothy Coward. With a time of 118.27, clean. Well done to Timothy. Thanks very much once again to Canoeing Down Under for all their support. Don't, <laughs> don't break the bin. <laughs> okay, number two is Kieran Simpson. With a time of 114.16, clean. And the, and the fastest paddler today, Benjamin Pope, with a time of 102.74, clean. Good effort. Congratulations to Ben, fantastic effort. Certainly showing his skills today. And once again, a fantastic gift out for canoeing down under. We'd like to thank all our volunteers today, all our timing personnel, our production crew for our 
fantastic television uh, challenge today. And also thanks to all the paddlers. You've done a fantastic job. And let's congratulate everybody here. Thank you. Okay. This is goodbye from Robin Sanders and, today. And goodbye from Neil Long. And over to Alicia. She's going to have a few words with our fantastic winners today. A huge thank okay. you to Robin and Neil for commentating today's events. So I'm here with one of our winners and our other winner is just about to join us. So how do you feel about winning today? Oh, very good. It's quite exciting, you know. <laughs> Nearly came, well, came second overall, so that's pretty good. Uh, and so you're obviously hoping to beat Ben? Yeah, I just got 11 seconds, you know, not much. <laughs> What do you hope to improve next time? Um, well, hopefully, I don't know, paddle a bit faster, I guess. Um, so, faster ups, maybe more necking around the gates, but want to keep it clean and tidy and just solid run, basically. <laughs> and how do you feel about your win today? I feel really good. I won, so <laughs> pretty happy about that. I had some good runs, so it's a pretty good day overall. Were you afraid about coming in second or third or not even making the top three today? I, I was worried about doing things badly. I, I was worried about her. I wasn't sure. She hasn't been around much, so I wasn't sure how close she would be to me. So I'm, I'm happy in the end. You worried that she might be a rival in the future? She could be, definitely. It's definitely a chance. She keeps training. Well, congratulations to you both. Thanks. And thank you for being here with us. I'm Sasha Costanzo for Central Broadcasting.